Well, the American left has celebrated Venezuela's socialist economic model for a long time and called for its imitation elsewhere. Unfortunately, as you just saw, the model appears to be encountering some fairly predictable difficulties recently, with violence, political unrest, and even starvation now sweeping the country, which, by the way, does not have toilet paper. Does the left still think that socialism works? Dakota Lilly is with the group Students and Youth for a New America. It's a pro-socialist youth organization and joins us now. Dakota, thanks a lot for coming on. Thank you. So do you see a pattern here? I mean, it's not just Venezuela, but it's also, I don't know, 1970s Bulgaria and Romania and Albania and the Soviet Union and Cuba and North Korea. And every country that has tried this economic system winds up in poverty. So do you see a connection between all of these cases? Well, Tucker, what I think is extremely important is we need to acknowledge that what Venezuela is currently facing right now is terrorism at the hands of the opposition. The opposition has bombed schools, they've bombed buses, they've taken wiring and strung it across roads to behead cops on motorcycles. These aren't choir boys, these are violent extremists hell-bent on taking away the progress Venezuela has made over the past few years. So who's got the guns in Venezuela? Private gun ownership is obviously illegal in Venezuela and so the overwhelming majority of firearms are in the hands of the government so how can the opposition to the government be the ones perpetrating the violence well Tucker if you look at the casualties that have happened in the past few months uh, in these protests the majority of those that have been killed have been trade unionist leaders have been dedicated chavistas have been people on the left so obviously the ones that are being targeted are those that support the government uh, Dakota, I don't want to rock your world, but I think reliable statistics probably pretty hard to come by under the Maduro government, I would say, which controls, of course, all the statistics coming out of Venezuela. But the bottom line is the country has had a socialist government for over 10 years. It's become poorer every year, despite having the world's largest oil reserves. Does that give you any cause to stop for a second and say, you know, maybe this whole socialism thing doesn't work that well. It's never worked anywhere. It's not working again. Maybe there's a lesson for me as a young American, no? Well, Tucker, everyone in Venezuela, including the president, uh, Nicolas Maduro, acknowledges that reforms are needed in things like food distribution and elsewhere. But uh -huh. very few, if anyone in Venezuela, want to go back to the pre-Chavez years of unbridled capitalism. So uh -huh. much so that the leader of the opposition, Enrique Capriles, calls himself a socialist. Huh. Um, presumably he means something different by that. Is your Spanish pretty good? I mean, do you, do you have a pretty good handle on popular opinion in Venezuela? How would you know what the majority of people in Venezuela want? Well, I mean, all you have to do is look at the astounding amount of elections that have been held over the past few years, ever since uh, the early 2000s when Chavez came in. People have come out time and time again to vote for the United Socialist Party, to vote for constitutional referendums and to vote for Hugo Chavez and Nicolas Maduro in okay, elections but... that have been certified by international observers like the Carter Center. So you really think that the government of Venezuela is on the level that it is a purely democratic government, that it's basically successful economically. How can you think that? I mean, have you spent a lot of time there? Have you talked to a lot of people about it? I mean, like, what gives you that idea? Well, Tucker, the if you look at the international observers that have certified these elections, I mean, what stake does Jimmy Carter and the Carter Center have in defining fraudulent elections as democratic? I mean, I think most people, if you look at the violence that has happened after these elections, all, every time the government has won an election, there's been mass violence. Yet, every, yet um, the one time the opposition won in December, there was no violence. And plus, at the end of the day, what stake is it of, what stake do American working families have in uh, the United States meddling in internal affairs in Venezuela? Well, I don't, I don't think it's a question of the United States meddling in internal affairs in Venezuela. It's just that it's a total disaster. Like, they don't have toilet paper in parts of the country. People are starving in, in what was pretty recently in my lifetime, I visited it as a kid, a rich country, a, a country making progress towards first world status, and now it's a disaster with one of the highest crime rates in the world like the Chavez and Maduro people did that why not just say that out loud why make excuses for them 
Well, again, like I said, everyone in the government acknowledges that things like crime are too high and reforms are needed. That was, th that was something that was mentioned by Chavez before he died and is still sh mentioned by Nicolas Maduro. But in terms of economics, the sanctions that the United States has put on Venezuela and the hoarding done by multinational corporations in Venezuela certainly doesn't help the situation. Okay, but that's not the real problem. I mean, look, the Supreme Court shut down the Congress in Venezuela, if you believe in democracy and you think people ought to have some say in their government, if the government's shutting down the Congress, I mean, that's authoritarian. And again, as an American, why would you make excuses for that? I mean, there's no re like, you're not Venezuelan, you don't have to pretend that this is going well. It's a total disaster, why not just say so? Well, Tucker, I mean, if you look at the accusations that were leveled against the National Assembly, they were legitimate uh, accusations. People believed that, um, certain members of the National Assembly have been illegally inaugurated and that's why okay. the Supreme Court struck it down which was then rescinded just a few days later so I mean it's well, not like there aren't checks and balances You're so it's not like I, there's I, not I just a process feel bad. it's just you know people I guess in college believe anything but it just seems like of all the things that we debate whether or not Venezuela is a success does seem to have moved into the beyond debate category. It's like a total disaster. So, you know, I don't know. If you don't see that, I'm probably not going to convince you on, on this show. But thanks for joining us, Dakota. I appreciate it. Thank you.